<laughs> I looked at it again. There okay. we go. We have to do it like that every time. Yeah. Hi, and welcome to the Arts History Podcast. I'm Lauren. And I'm Georgia. And it's episode 34 this week. Yes. Uh, we skipped last week. We won't bore you with the details, but uh, we're back. So don't worry. Yeah. We're here. We're here for you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a beautiful day in Toronto. Mm-hmm. It's Friday. And uh, it actually feels like summer, spring today. Yeah, it's so warm. Like, too warm to have a sweater on, but simultaneously after the winter, I feel like naked. Yeah. Not having my shoulders covered. I know. It's like I can't wear sandals yet. I feel like people will look at me weird, but mm-hmm. it definitely is one of those days. Definitely one of those days where I was driving and the sun coming in my windshield, I just wanted to close my eyes and conk out. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it was very Dangerous. warm in my car. But, um... Yeah, okay, so uh, we've got something fun for you this week. We're going to go check it out, which George is going to talk about later. Yeah. And um, I don't have a musical artist to talk about this week, but uh, I do have one for next week, and I'm really excited to talk about them. So oh, cool. um, look forward to uh, talking about them next week. But this week, just a couple little bit of new stories um, to get us back into the podcast mode. Nice. I like that teaser that you've yeah. got going on. I'm excited now. I plan that. I'd like to uh, leave you hanging. Yeah. Pro podcasting skills. I've been like listening to a lot of the radio in the morning mm-hmm. lately now, like morning shows, and I'm like, wow, like, maybe George and I one day will be like, the host of a, our own radio show. That would be amazing. Wouldn't uh, that be fun? Yes. It's like, what do they even talk about? They talk about news that people already know about, like mm-hmm. cheesy like celebrity gossip and they talk about the weather and traffic and what they did on the weekend it's like well we could do that and throw in a little bit extra depends on the radio station but like i'm talking like normal right like pop yeah like top 40 stations yeah yeah jazz fam's a little bit more sophisticated in what they talk Mm -hmm. about but just the round the mill yeah no ones we could totally do that yeah a little bit of flair Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so actually, before we really start, I wanted to talk to you about that video you posted on our Facebook page. Um, the OMA did this video, what was it called? Sir Sam Steel Funk or something like that? Yeah, it was like, uh, oh jeez, now I can't remember the name of it. Oh, I feel so bad. I think but it was something like, like that. It's like Sir Sam Steel Funk, and it's it's the Uptown Funk song. Yeah. Um, it was so good. Yeah. Uh, Your uh, Shannon Hawk, mm-hmm. she, I think she was probably like one of the main people behind it. Yeah, was yeah. that Peggy? Yes. Okay, because I'm like, I think that's Peggy. I think I went yeah. to elementary school with her mm-hmm. <laughs> in high school. Um, really cool. If you guys are watching this, job well done. That was video. Yeah. I watched it probably like well, a couple times. It was just so good. Mm-hmm. It was uh, awesome to see yeah, the OMA so doing something useful and, and exciting. Yeah, it's a part, part of a larger program that's like a museum dance-off where all these museums are putting together cool dance videos um and i think april 20th you can start voting for your favorite and stuff like that and i think there might even be like a round two i don't know if they do another video or exactly how it works but it's definitely a cool thing to be promoting museums and doing cool stuff online with media yeah they uh they definitely didn't slouch on any part of that video it was very well put together yeah organized and uh delivered so yeah. if you haven't seen it yet uh, the link is on our facebook page so just check it out the arts district podcast facebook page and you'll see it on there um yeah it's really good so enjoy it yeah we'll also put links to the museum and their contact info and how you can vote and stuff in the description mm-hmm. yeah i'd like to i'd like to vote for them for sure mm-hmm. uh second i was scrolling through my instagram this morning like i do every morning it's instead of reading the newspaper i've got instagram and <laughs> yeah. all those other social media outlets yeah. and uh, way home which georgia and i were there when the night that they announced their lineup well part of the lineup mm-hmm. um they were announcing their little second round of artists that are scheduled to be playing the festival mm-hmm. um in a very secretive way again very code like I, I couldn't figure it out i had to read the comments to figure it out yeah um, it was all these like dashes and dots and things it was it was like, um, apparently it's like the astro, I don't know the word, astro, not, yeah, like astronomy sign for um, Pluto. Oh. 
So I put, so I went to the website and I put the password in, which was supposed to be Pluto, and there was no like enter button. So I thought maybe my screen would change, but nothing happened. So I couldn't get onto the second page, which apparently had like four squares with with more codes in them, and uh, I guess those codes were supposed to be hints as to four more performers. Oh. Now people were saying Tegan and Sarah. And tragically hip, which I don't know if they would play a festival like that, yeah. but maybe they would. Um, more rumors were Brendan Flowers from The Killers, uh, the Arctic Monkeys, which would be cool. Um, but I don't know of anyone that was actually for sure. And I haven't checked since this morning, so maybe it's uh, it's leaked out finally okay. what all these secret codes mean. Mm. Um, but yeah, there was just a lot of speculations because no one could really figure it out. And apparently no one could get past that second page, so... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm interested. Yeah. I was really hoping Heim would be on that bill, but right. I guess I'll have to wait for them some other time. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like Tegan and Sarah would play a festival like this. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Maybe Brenner Flowers. By himself? Well, probably like his solo band. Oh, does he have a solo band? Bank. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, but I don't know if I... Yeah, Tragically Hip? I don't know. This doesn't feel like... Because... I've heard that, like, Way Home was connected with, like, Coachella or yeah. Bonaire, Bonnaroo Bonner, yeah. and all that stuff, so mm-hmm. I, that doesn't feel like they're kind of... It's unfortunate because they are Canadian and mm. their music is perfect for that landscape and the whole vibe that they're yeah, trying to go true. for, but musically it doesn't mesh with all the other acts that they've got. They've got, mm-hmm. like, a ton of pop and, um, like, hip-hop, uh, like, just, like, the newer less like old school rock yeah yeah so i mean i i would still watch them it would just Mm -hmm. i just don't know how people would react to that there Mm -hmm. amongst all those like heavy pop bands but yeah yeah i know i guess Mm -hmm. um and it could still just be speculation so right so i guess we'll keep you posted and put stuff up on our facebook and twitter and yeah. All that jazz when we have more info. Yeah, so the link for that, if you want to try and crack the code, was mm-hmm. wayhome.com slash 2TWO, not the letter or the number. So go on and uh, try your try your skills at cracking those codes. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, I'm doing all the talking here, but no, it's okay. we'll, we'll do your thing right before we, we yeah. head out to the thing. Okay. Um, another thing that I wanted to say was I heard it on Jazz FM yesterday morning on my drive. Um, apparently Google, you know how Google has like Google Earth where you can go like do street view of pretty much anywhere? Mm-hmm. Well, they did this new thing. They partnered with Abbey Road Studios in London. It's in London, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, um, yeah. And they do like this whole like virtual tours in the style of like street view. Cool. Um, of Abbey Road. So you can go in and you can see like the three studios within Abbey Road and their mastering suite. And uh, you can see like um, the London Symphony Orchestra is in there doing a session. So you can like pan around and see all the musicians. Cool. And there's things that you can click on. It's very interactive. Um, you can move around the room and there's you can like click on microphones and read about the microphone or how they achieved a certain sound in some other session. There's a lot of Beatles info with like pictures and they show the picture in like the studio now. So it's kind of like black and white against the the color background of the studio now. Cool. So yeah, it's really neat. Um, Lots of information. Really cool to go inside of a studio that you might not otherwise have been able Mm -hmm. to go into. Um, Just a a neat idea. But Google's always on the forefront for doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So... I'm wondering if they're going to do any more. Yeah, I feel like that's something I've heard of them doing for other buildings, mm-hmm. but I'm not 100% sure on that. I wonder how long it took them to put all that together, but yeah, yeah the thing is called Inside yeah. Abbey Road Studios. Okay. Um, we'll put the link in, as we do with all mm-hmm. of our things, and you can check it out if you haven't already. Um, a lot of people were talking about it yesterday, so maybe you've already checked it out, mm-hmm. but in case you haven't, yeah. Um, that's really cool. There's something really interesting about Google Maps because it feels really immediate, but actually, like, it's a moment in time, right? Like, mm-hmm. you're looking, you feel like you're looking at an actual 
thing in life. Yeah. But actually, it could have been captured, like, a while ago. So yeah. It'll be interesting to see, like, if they keep on top of updating something like that, or if it just stays, like, 2015 Abbey Road Studio, you know? I think they'll probably just keep it, um, who knows, maybe in, like, 20 years if it's still around, they do that, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it is interesting because like when you Google Street View, my house in Aurelia, it's still white, but it's actually green now. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I think they did Aurelia old. like a while ago. Maybe it's changed now. I haven't checked it in a while, mm -hmm. but and the, the place that I was staying in Hamilton, <laughs> there's like my landlord taking the garbage out in the in the pictures. Yeah. It's like is somebody outside. It's yeah, That's it's my funny. landlord taking out the garbage. Um, so yeah, interesting. It's been we can la definitely waste a lot of time on Google Maps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that maps are cool. Maps are cool. Um, okay, last little story here. The Barry Examiner posted uh, an article. Gordon Lightfoot, our good old homeboy from Marilia, is getting awarded an honorary doctorate degree from Lakehead University. Oh. Um, so that's good for him. Yeah. Is he speaking? I'm sure he'll say something okay. in the way of thanks, but that's happening June 6th at Rotary Place um, on the Lakehead campus, and it's uh, taking place during convocation, so if you want to go see some people graduate and see Gordon Light but accept his doctorate degree, mm -hmm. go to the Rotary Place on June 6th. Did it say that you could just get in like that? Probably not, but... Yeah, Because okay. <laughs> I remember, like, my graduation it was like you got you two tickets seats, and yeah. you had to pay extra to get a third one but that's all you get yeah well so. you can just hang around outside the building yeah, wait to say hi um yeah so good for gordon mm -hmm. yep i'd like an honorary doctorate please yeah me too lauren <laughs> campbell doctor of music yeah what does that even mean i don't know i don't know like yeah. what does that get you would you be able to put doctor in front of all your Mail addresses? You could, <laughs> but, like, doctor is so associated with being a medical doctor yeah. that it just kind of causes yeah. confusion. Yeah. There's a lot of people that have been given doctorate degrees in music. Mm -hmm. I think Stevie Nicks has one, too. Oh, yeah. It's just like, yes, it's an honor, but does it really change your life? Mm -hmm. I guess... I guess it's a piece of paper. You should just be honored, and I'm stupid. Like, yeah. I would well, be happy to have I guess, that, too. I guess what they're doing <laughs> is acknowledging all that you've accomplished and learned outside an educational environment by giving you a piece of paper that says, wow, you have learned a lot. So can I have a doctorate of life? Like, I've learned a lot about life outside of the classroom. I don't think anyone under the age of 30 has received an <laughs> honorary doctorate, but I could be wrong. No, that's true. That's something they put said in the article. It's like oh, yeah. distinguished older people <laughs> basically <laughs> okay. um but yeah yeah well that's cool he's yeah. gonna be back in Aurelia mm -hmm. you know uh all right so shall I get into love art what's our time wow we said all that in 13 minutes Good job. your record Good job. okay thanks um so we are going to love art um with some of my arts connections I got us free like access pass um so it's happening april 17th to 19th and i think there was also a bit of a preview yesterday on the 16th and it's happening um at the exhibition grounds in toronto at the direct energy center this is the second year love art has happened in toronto but it's a part of a larger sort of event thing um called affordable art fair which was founded in the uk like a number of years ago um, and they sort of specialize in emerging artists and look to have works that are more affordable. So things range from $100 to 10 or 100, yes, well, numbers, well, 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 well. <laughs> um, $100 to $10,000, um, but averaging out around like 5000 I think it said. Um, so they're sort of really focusing on like getting emerging artists going and uh, yeah, stuff like that. So um, yeah, like I said, it started in the UK, first one was in London, and now they've sort of expanded to Amsterdam, New York, Milan, Singapore, Hamburg, Mexico City, Seattle, Stockholm, Hong Kong, and more. Um, 
One so, more. Yeah, there's one more, but I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I feel terrible. It's like it's we've, German or something. We both didn't know how to say it. Uh, uh, stretched or something like that. <laughs> something like that. I don't know. Anyways, there's we'll, one more. We'll put the link in the description. <laughs> you can look up what the other city is. Um, yeah, so uh, that's... Yeah, there's over 45 galleries exhibiting, and I think a lot of these are called Affordable Art Fair. I don't know why they gave Toronto a different name, um, but they did. They just said, it's the same thing, but it has a different name. Um, Always trying to be different. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. It's I know like that's a big space. I don't know if they're using the whole thing. Uh, it's where the one-of-a-kind craft show was, which so it's like, mm. it's enormous. Uh, so we're going to go check that out and I guess we'll try and get some footage and maybe talk a little bit about it, what we saw after or something. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, let's go enjoy our footage. Mm-hmm. Okay. So here's a few photos of Lauren and I attending the love art event. And I thought I would just give you a few of my thoughts on it. Um, post event attendance. Um, I, uh, I think it was a really beautifully presented art fair and everything was put together really neatly. Uh, I went into it knowing that there would be lots of galleries there, but I didn't think about the fact that there wouldn't be artists around. Like everyone was in suits and really fancy. Um, and as much as I love going out and seeing art, these kind of events I struggle with because I guess I'm still young and idealistic and especially coming from a digital art background, it's hard for me to see like this kind of commodification of art. Um, I realize that artists have to eat and have a place to live, but, um, yeah, just seeing everything for sale and seeing stuff out of context. Like, there was only the artist's name and the medium and the price written beside each piece. There wasn't any sort of um, background. So I guess if buyers are going in, they know what artists they're looking for and they have an idea of what the work's about, or, um, or maybe they don't and they just buy what they like visually. But um, yeah, seeing stuff out of context and seeing it just just for sale like that is weird for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know how I feel about these kinds of events yet. I'm, I guess I'm going to keep going to them. I've been to a few in the past and see if my ideas change, but, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. (laughs) Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>